so let me share my screen with you okay can you see it can you see the screen yes sir yes sir. it is visible okay so any questions from last class or last session okay if not uh, let us move forward uh, I think we will be uh, done with the topic of sets today and the first thing I want to discuss is um, the family of sets <coughs> so let's talk about family of sets so what does this mean well a set can contain other sets inside it too you know sets are what collection of objects right it may happen that some sets may carry other sets inside it so if we try to look at an example okay someone is here okay so let's take a look at an example let's say we have a set a we have some elements a b c and let's say there is another element but this element can be a set itself for example one two then um, this is an example of a family of a set that means the set A is containing another set inside it as an element we can make up another set B and let's say B looks something like this one two comma three a B C like this <coughs> so as you can see all three elements are sets itself so these are your family of sets okay because uh, by definition sets are what sets are collection of objects and those objects can be anything and by using that definition you can also assign those objects to become set itself and in that case these are called families of set you call this be a family of sets uh, in some textbook it's also called set of sets any questions okay so if not uh, I can show you another example consider a set that contains two sets defined as follows let's call that set Z2 I'll explain what this means in a little bit and it's written like this and this zero uh, enclosed by this third braces or third brackets uh, and this one enclosed by this third braces are called equivalence classes you don't have to worry about you know what is an equivalence class I'll just show it to you um, and it's not necessary for this course but this is a very interesting example so that's why I'm showing it to you what what does this zero contain well this zero is just um, 
it's a collection of all the numbers uh, that you can divide by 2 and get a reminder of 0 that means it's the set of all even numbers for example you can have minus this obviously there are other elements da 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 da, da minus 100 da 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 da, da 0 2 4 6 da 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 da, da. okay so any element uh, that belongs to this zero set or this equivalence class can be written as 2k where k belongs to z and z means set of integers and similarly this set one will contain all the odd numbers that means if you take any number that has this form 2k plus 1 if you divide it by 2 you get a reminder of 1 reminder will the so the elements of this one or this equivalence class represented by this one with this third braces are just odd numbers for example one zero one ta 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 one three five seven ta 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 goes on and on <coughs> and the reason they are called equivalence classes well uh because uh when you say that three and five are equivalent to each other uh, you have to specify what do you mean by an equivalence uh, relation and in this case in this particular example we are saying that oh if you divide by 2 you get a reminder of 1 for 3 similarly if you divide by 2 you get a reminder of 1 when you are dealing with 5 so in this sense you know in terms of the reminder they are equivalent to each other and that's why they're called uh, equivalence classes because this sets uh, all these numbers when you are talking about 0 the remainder is 0 and when you're talking about 1 the remainder is 1 you know when divided by 0 or modulo 2 and this z2 means this collection of this equivalence classes so this is another example of family of sets any questions No, sir. Okay. All right. So now that's out of the way. Let's talk about universal sets. So whenever we are studying some uh, group of co a group or you know a collection of sets, uh, what we can do is we can think of a bigger set, and the sets under study can be thought of as a subset of that bigger set and this bigger set is known as the universal set so let's say I can have sets A, B, C let's say for example I'm studying uh, you know these three sets and I can assume there exists this symbol stands for there exists a set U such that A, B, C, all three of them are subset of U. In this case, U is called an universal set. and if we want to take a look at an example well let's say u is a collection of numbers from 0 to 9 and a is some um, collection of 0 1 2 b is a collection 2 3 4 
C is a collection of 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. When you are studying these three sets, you can think of them as a subset of U, right? So U is kind of like the bigger fish. And you can uh, represent this whole thing in diagrams too. Uh, we'll talk about it very soon. That is a Venn diagram. This is U, let's say. This is A. This is B. And since C doesn't contain any of these elements, so C will be a disjoint one. This is C. Okay. This U is your universal set, the biggest set that uh, contains all the sets under study inside it. Okay. Um, any questions? No, sir. Okay, so we're just dealing with some sort of definitions for now. Okay. <coughs> and then comes the definition of a power set. Uh, if you have any set A, let's say, a power set A, I think they write it as P of A maybe, or some people um, write it like this maybe, I, I don't exactly remember, but as long as you are clear on what you are writing, any notation is fine. So a power set of A. is just the family of all the possible subsets. So let me give you an example. Let's say A is 1, 2, 3, like this. So the power set of A, I'm denoting it with P of A, First of all, I know that uh, by definition it has to be a family of sets, right? So uh, I don't know whether you can recall it or not, but uh, last day I was talking about whenever you write a set, the null set is there by default. So even if I am writing just one, two, three, there is a null set over here too. So this power set will contain this null set. And then it will contain the set itself. Why? Because a set is a subset of itself, right? Because A is equals to A, and we know that if two sets are equal to each other, then this has to be true. So, the other subsets are as the following. If you have any questions, feel free to interrupt. so there should be eight elements one two three four five six seven eight yep so this is a power set and you can see this is a collection of all the possible subsets yeah uh, just unmute your mic and you can ask um Sir, I have to copy. Sir, if you have a null set, or 1, 2, 3, but if you do A, then you have to say power set in the middle of A. Oh, A means this one. I just didn't write Sir? it, you know, inside braces. I, I just didn't write it explicitly. A means the A set. I mean, A set is the... Oh, okay. Sorry, yeah. This is a shorthand notation, okay? So, yeah. You can write write it like this. It's fine. Okay, so any more questions regarding power sets? Maybe I should give you some work right now so that you can understand if you have any difficulty in 
sorting these things out. So take another example, P is equals to A, B. What is P of B? That means the power set of B. Can anyone tell me? Try to figure this out. Take a moment and try to figure this out. Okay. And if you already have an answer, feel free to share it. So there should be a null and then A and B and AB together. Okay. So you are saying this is a null set. There should be B. That means AB. Then there is what? And, and then there is A and B. A and B. Okay. What about... Uh, this one can you find the power set of C think for a moment and let me know so uh, I can give you a hint that is it has three elements, so the power set will contain 2 to the power 3, that is 8 elements. And how this works out, uh, I'm going to show you in a bit. So think for a moment and uh, let me know if you already have an answer. Um, subset kulo hoche x, y, x and 1, 2 and then y and 1, 2 Achha, and so then no, x, I, y. Yeah, 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 slow down a little bit. Okay, so let's okay. write this down. So you're saying that subset is the first one is null, right? <laughs> okay, and then null. C. And then yeah. C. And then x. X, y. Y. Mm -hmm. And then x, 1, 2. X, comma, 1, comma, 2 like this yes and then okay. y one y, two one two and then x y x y that's it okay let me guess who agrees is there anyone who agrees with this answer or is there anyone who there one one is missing one where <coughs> oh, you mean one comma two, just one comma two, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Is there anyone who agrees or who disagrees? Anyone in favor of this answer? Or is there anyone who would like to refute this answer? No comments? Okay. So there should be eight elements, right? Okay. Yeah, there should be eight elements. We got that yeah. correct. But do you agree yeah, that do you agree that these are the elements themselves are, you know, correct? Like I can write eight elements at random, right? Just using this information. But can you justify why? these elements are correct I mean I have X and Y these are just single entities right but then I have another set inside a set that is 1 comma 2 which itself is a set so if you take a look because uh, the ones one. in the bracket are, s are considered to be a single entity exactly that's the answer I was looking for so yeah so sets are by definition a collect collection of objects right entities single entities and you collect them together you get a set so even though this is a set itself when it's put inside another set we consider them as a single entity so this set itself is a single entity so yeah this answer is correct. so I have a question yeah <coughs> 
if I if I don't wanna write null set on subset, is there any problem? You have to. There's some things are different. I mean, this is a bit confusing because usually when you write a set, um, you don't write the write the null set explicitly. But when you are uh, writing power sets, you put the null set inside there. I mean, that's how mathematicians okay. defined it. I don't know why. And I think someone from this section asked that, okay, let's say you have a, uh, I think that this question came from last day, like uh, if you have a set of numbers, let's say integers, then that d there is also a null set, right? Um, and is it coming from the fact that all the decimal point numbers are missing? The answer is no. Um, because uh, in mathematics, at first you have to define things. You might think, okay, there are integers, so there should be decimal point numbers as well. That's how much we know about the real line, right? But unless you define there is a decimal point number, it's not there. It might sound very weird, but that's how things work in mathematics. At first you have to yes. define things. So no, uh, that null set over there is just there by definition. Uh, it uh, doesn't have to do anything with the decimal point numbers existence. Okay, so good. Okay, fine. So what you can do at home is that you can check that you can take any set A with N elements. And if you compute the power set, it, it will have two n elements I mean take a set of three or four elements and try to compute the power set and you will always see that this rule is satisfied but the question is can we prove it the answer is yes and a simple proof would consist of the idea of mathematical induction. Everyone knows what an induction is? If you don't, you can ask or I can give a brief summary of in what induction is. Okay, so can you explain? Yeah, so what is induction, right? Uh, uh, sorry, there is a call. Uh, can you excuse me for two minutes? Sorry about that. I need to take it. Okay, sir. Rakin, I'm in class. আমি আজকে আসতে যাচ্ছি না আমার ওই সকালের যে ক্লাস ছিল আমি ইলেকট্রিসিটির জন্য নিতে পারি নাই মানে ইলেকট্রিসিটি ছিল না আচ্ছা নিয়ে আসো কয়টা বাজবে এক ঘন্টা এমনি তো সময় 7টা বাজবে আমার 7টা এখন একটা ক্লাস ওটা 6:30 টায় শেষ হবে আবার 7টার দিকে আরেকটা আমি তোমার সাথে কাল পরশুই দেখা করব না প্যারা নাই শুক্রবারে আসো না ঢাকায় আচ্ছা so first step of induction is that prove the statement let's say you have a statement this is the thing you want to prove right statement statement is true for n equals to 1 for example our 
statement of this this power set will contain two n elements then the second step involves assume the given statement is true for n equals to m this is an assumption okay first of all you have to prove that this is true for n equals to 1 the second step involves that you assume this is true for n equals to m and the last step is that take m plus 1 and show that the I mean sorry n equals to m plus 1 and show that the statement holds for n plus 1 as well by using the assumption in step 2 this is the idea of induction I think uh, uh, it was introduced in high school when you had to prove some sort of sequences I don't know whether you guys saw it or not but back in our days uh, uh, this idea was there okay okay so let me show you how this really works okay because all these statement statements can fit really uh, you know de derail your mind and stuff so we want to show that if my set has elements n the power set will contain uh, 2 to the power n elements so proof So if my set has only one element, how does the set look like? Well, it looks something like this. Let's say the element is A. And what is the power set? Can anyone tell me what is the power set of A? Null a, a and a null set. A and a null set. Okay. So there are two elements, right? In the power set. So for n equals to 1, this is true. This statement holds. Let's assume for n equals to m, if a has m elements, p of a will have 2 to the power m elements we are assuming this is true this is our assumption now let's put n equals to m plus 1 that means instead of m what we're going to do we're just going to put m2 and instead of m we are just giving m plus 1 you can also think of it like this m goes to m plus 1 whichever way is convenient for you but when you write at 2 to the power m plus 1, you can always decompose it as the following. 2 to the power m times 2, right? Yes, sir. Okay, but our assumption was what? When m was equals to n, that means if you, if you only had m, you can always replace that thing with m, right? So instead of 2 to the power m, I can now write 2 to the power n and you have a 2 over here which is just 2 to the power n plus 1 so there you go by induction it's proven okay so don't worry about if you don't understand how this thing truly works um, don't worry about it uh, there won't be any questions from induction but uh, maybe at some point in your life uh, these things will help I cannot say exactly why but uh, Zunad Bhai asked me to show you guys the induction thing so I thought this would be a good thing since we were talking about sets and stuff okay any questions no sir Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
one last definition disjoint set So let's say you have two sets and they are called disjoints. If there is no element in common, mm, let's take a look at example that will make things more clear. Let's say A, B, C, D and b is equals to let's say 1 2 k l m since there are no elements in common between these two sets we call a and b are disjoints and if you take another set let's say c is equals to 1 then taka like this C and A they are disjoint but C and B they are not because they do have one element in common and that's just one but A and C are disjoint why because none of the elements are common so even if you have a single element that is common in two of the sets then they're not disjoint that, um, and that brings us to the kind of you know end of definitions and stuff uh, we'll shortly uh, talk about Venn diagrams all the things that we did uh, can be expressed in terms of Venn diagrams so these are kind of like a visual aid tool or something I don't know so what is a Venn diagram well the kind of things that we did before you know the circles the squares to represent sets and stuff uh, it's also called Venn Euler diagrams so if you don't know who Euler is look him up he's one of the most greatest mathematician ever lived do you guys know how population increase like you know at what rate or how radioactive things decay I mean in 1971 or 2 the population I think was half than it is currently Okay, so let's forget about population. Do you, um, and I, we are living in a COVID era, right? So how does COVID uh, infect, uh, infect people? Like, how does it affect us? This is patient zero, right? The guy from, or the woman from Wuhan. And he can get in touch with, uh, let's say, three or 10 people. And then they will get in touch with more 10 people so at step 2 you have 10 people at step 3 you have what 10 over 10 because each of these 10 people are interacting with 10 people right so this type of growths are called exponential growth and um, I think you guys know the number E which is a uh, which is what something 2.38 something I don't remember the exact value but uh, Euler was the guy who found out all these stuffs you know if any process uh, if any process depends on the current situation then uh, it will form a differential equation and the solution would be an exponential one so you know population increase uh, it will depend on how many people are present at the time the more there are people the more it's gonna increase radioactive decays uh, the more elements there uh, there will uh, you'll get more decays and stuff like that so any natural process that happens always follows this exponential growth even COVID that's why you see a sudden surge in the spike if you take a look at the graph that's how it works and that's how you can easily predict that it's not going to die out anytime soon okay so Euler is a genius guy I mean mo uh, the reason I'm saying that is that uh, if you take a look at his life uh, he spent half of his life you know in a blind state he was not able to see anything 
he took the help of his three sons I think he had three sons and he did some really awesome work মানে পুরো জীবন অর্ধেক সময় সে অন্ধ ছিল আর কি এবং সে চলতে ফিরতে পারতো না কাইন্ড অফ লাইক স্টিভেন হকিং বাট হকিং ওয়াজ এ না মানে ডিফারেন্ট স্টেটস বাট ইয়া কাইন্ড অফ লাইক দ্য সেম আই ডোন্ট নো মাচ অ্যাবাউট ভেন সো এই জন্য আমি কিছু বলি নাই ভেনের ব্যাপারে বাট অয়েলার ইজ ওয়ান অফ মাই পার্সোনাল ফেভারিট সো দ্যাটস ওয়াই ইক টু ইউ নো ফ্যান বয় মোমেন্ট আর কি ওকে সো ওকে ভেন ড্রাগনস রাইট সো let's uh try to visualize some stuff let's say a is the set uh we can denote it with a circle like this okay but now what about this a is a subset of b can we show it in terms of venn diagrams that's the question so it's pretty easy just draw a circle and there's another one and uh this red one it's contained within this white circle right and a is a subset of b that means a is contained within b so this red shaded area will represent a and this white shaded area will represent b that's how we represent a is a subset of b you can even draw the red circle like this it really doesn't matter this is just a visual aid tool mm. and uh, <coughs> uh we talked about universal set right and in universal set let's say you denote it with a square you can also denote it with with a circle it really doesn't matter so this is your universal set and all the sets under the study are a subset of the universal set so let's say this is set a this is set b there is another set c and you can also comment the fact that this a b c they're disjoint because there is no overlap and at this point i should introduce two more set operations one is union the other one is intersection okay am i going a bit too fast if i'm going a bit too fast uh, you can ask me to slow down no sir it's okay okay so let's talk about union and intersection first and then we'll get back to representing them in venn diagram so a union is written like this this reads as a union b what does this mean well if you have a set like this 1 and 2 b as a comma b a union b just means put them together inside a single set that means 1 2 a b like this what about if your a contains 1 2 3 <laughs> and a and you want to have a union b sorry let's call this a prime so this will be just a comma b like this and you can see that even though a is a common element we don't write it twice we just write it once and this union of two sets can be visualized in terms of the Venn diagrams so this is a set a this is a set b if you merge them together you will have a oh okay let me use a different color so that you can understand what i'm trying to say you can have another set like this and you know forget all this white boundaries and stuff um and this blue line will represent your a union b similarly uh we can talk about intersections so
so um, let's say my set A is written as 1 2 3 B is written as A comma B and let's say I have another set called 1 comma A comma uh, capital A let's say and the intersection is denoted with this symbol if I write this this reads as A intersected or intersection B and this operation tells you to find out the common elements if you take A intersection B for this example this is what 1 2 3 intersection with A comma B you can see that there is no element in common right so in set theoretic language there is nothing in common so what does that imply can anyone tell me a null set exactly so the intersection is null you can put braces over here it really doesn't matter as soon as you put a null it really doesn't matter so this is a choice you can either put the braces you can get rid of the braces doesn't matter but what if you take a intersection of A intersect with C this is A and this is C what's the common element? I think the answer is one. One. one right what about B intersection C A, A. okay good and in a Venn diagram uh, language you write it like this this is A this is B this shaded region gives you a intersection B and notice that when I'm doing this intersection for this particular example I'm getting a null set a intersection B right so this is also indication of disjoint set which means there is no intersection between them so if you want to draw a Venn diagram it will look like this they don't overlap in any way sort or form okay so this is the general picture even though I'm using B uh, we can obviously uh, denote this with some B prime doesn't matter but that's how the Venn diagram works in terms of this unions intersection blah 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 that's pretty much it and one last uh, basic set operations that you need to know is the difference or set difference so how does this set difference works well first of all uh, let's say you have again two sets uh, the set difference between a and B is written as A slash B this means set difference uh, some textbook uh, will use this symbol and they will also call it a subtraction but uh, that's really inappropriate because it's, it's not a subtraction okay so I prefer this one you can also write this one uh, really doesn't matter and how does this thing work well what does the set difference tells you well it's pretty easy whatever is inside B just get rid of it show it let me show you an, an example and that should make things more clear so let's say one two three four I have another set let's say a two four and let's say I have a set C a comma 1 comma 2 and I have another set D let's say a B like this so if you want to compute a difference B you will write this as 1 2 3 4 and B is what B is a 2 4 right and this symbol means 
get every thing from B I mean collect it and get rid of it if it's inside a get rid of it so it contains a 2 and 4 right and inside a you have 2 and 4 as well so just get rid of them or you can think of it in another way don't look at B don't look at what is on the right hand side of the set difference symbol rather look on the left and try to find out the unique elements that are not inside B so in this case 1 and 3 are not inside B right so the result is just 1 and 3 mathematically what we say is that you take these elements 1 2 4 and you identify it with the elements inside A if there is identification you get rid of them or so but what about A a is not there, just get rid of it, dump it. Mm, does that make any sense? So this is like a, I don't know, razor blade or something. This razor blade cuts everything that is inside B. And if it's inside A, it cuts it too. Some sort of a two-sided blade. I don't know. That's a very bad analogy, but yeah. Okay and uh, what about this one a difference C a is 1 2 3 4 C is capital A 1 2 can anyone tell me what this will be 3 4 3 4, four. Yeah. Three, four. okay what about a slash D or a difference D you have one, two, three, four, and here you have a, a comma b. I think it's now uh, one, one, two, three, four. This is one, two, three, four. Exactly. Okay. Because uh. a and b is not inside a, right? And since it's not in, not inside a, and we are only getting rid of the terms that appear in the right hand side of the different symbol. In this case, we can't get rid of any of the elements that is inside A. So the answer is just one, two, three, four. And finally, there's a remark. A difference null is A. This is a remark. Okay. Okay, is it too loud? Should I mute myself? Can you hear the azan or do you want to take a... I don't know. Do you want to take a break? I'm almost so done. Maybe yes, for sir. one minute break. We maybe for break. one yeah. minute break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> should I continue I'm almost done so um, shouldn't take more than 10 minutes I think 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. okay, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you. So yeah, this is uh, like all you know. This covers all the basic operations of sets for your course. And uh, there's one last thing. Um, but yeah, it's defined via the set difference, so it's not that hard. That is called a set complement. So a set complement is what? It's denoted with A prime or sometimes uh, some people write it as A of C. That means the complement of set A. Uh, this is just defined as, let's say you you have a universal set A. Uh, that means A is a subset of U. So your AC or A prime is just U difference with A. If you want to see a Venn diagram, it will look something like this. Let's say this is U, this is A, then this region will contain the elements of A prime, or so to say the complement of A. Okay, so that's pretty much it uh, for the set operations, and uh, I think I I can give an explicit example just so that you guys are clear about it. So let's take a universal set of one, two, three, four, and take A is one and two. What is AC or you know A prime? Three, four. Exactly. So pretty easy, easy, st easy stuff, right? Like once you understand what is the set difference, set complement is a pretty easy thing to do. So yeah. With this, I'm done with all the set things. Uh, nothing new will be covered. Uh, you might ask, okay, there is De Morgan's law, yada yada yada, stuff like that. Will we go there? No, not in this course. So yeah, that's pretty much it for sets. But I will give you some exercises today, and maybe later I'll compose them as homework. So. This is a heads up on exercises. I want you to try these things out. If A is a subset of B, this will imply. So this symbol means implies. If A is a subset of B, you can show that A intersection B is just A. Two, if A is a subset of B, this also implies a union B is just B. 3. If A is a subset of B, B's complement is a subset of A's complement. And finally, if A is a subset of B, then you can show that A union B difference A is equals to B. I don't expect any rigorous proof. Uh, you can use logical arguments or Venn diagrams for this. Try to do these things. Uh, maybe at the end of the week, uh, you will see these problems in your homework. I mean, the first two are pretty easy, right? It, it, it's intuitive. And this one. If A is a subset of B, then B's complement is a subset of A's complement. Uh, try to try to draw a Venn diagram, and see what happens. And you might have some trouble in this one. I'm not sure, but uh, just try it, okay? And if you can't do it, then Maybe I'll solve it someday. But if it appears in the assignment, obviously you'll get the solution after the assignment deadline has passed. So, you know, play, play around with these things, especially the Venn diagram. Okay, so we are done with sets, and uh, I won't teach anything new today. And from the next class, we'll talk about real numbers, and then I'll go into complex numbers. So, any questions so far? Uh...
Okay, so let me stop the recording.